My name is Alessio. Uh, I work at Magic Leaf for like around two years and a half. Uh, I worked in uh, always in their, their section of uh, design and engineering, platform design, so kind of like tooling, like how things look like on our iOS. And I think my take differently maybe from Jason's that gave an amazing overview on the headset is really like what happened when you try to buy a headset or when someone gave to you an headset and you try to start to work with it? And uh, so I'm mostly on the Unity side of things, so I'm sorry if there is a specialized Unreal Engine developer in the crowd. Uh, I had some experience, but mostly I've been working on Unity, so I'm very happy to give you a lot of insights about our Unity tools now and also after the presentation. Please don't hesitate just to come here. I can't see anything, by the way. <laughs> it's so dark. Okay, so how is working with Magic Leap? Uh, Magic Leap is an amazing device. Uh, being a very passionate, uh, you know, AR person, I can tell with certainty that it's the best AR device I ever work with. Uh, it's the best performance, best like larger field of view. Uh, there is no doubt that like AR looks better on Magic Leap, in my opinion, than any other headset. And um, the the fact is that you really have the capacity to you know, dream big, building on this headset to build like uh, things that are really like real scale, to don't really think about having something that is floating in front of you. You can also do something that is feels very spatial. And so uh, perfect for architecture visualization. Also, I come from an architecture background, so I found it very insightful. I, I was finding insightful Magic Leap 1, so Magic Leap 2, it feels like almost like you don't see where the field of view is cutting, which is, it, absolutely incredible. Um, also, it's very lightweight, and like we see in the previous presentation, uh, with all of the specs, it's something that doesn't look, you know, too bad. And uh, there is a, a missing design. We won like awards, and I know that everyone that is like kind of skeptical about XR or or, or not really like, you know. Uh, bullish on that, they always will, you know, say that the, the form factor is definitely like a big part of it. But we try to do our best, and I think we got to an amazing uh, deal <laughs> in this case for Magic Loop 2, and I can't wait to see what's next in the story of this headset. So here you have an overview of all of the uh, specs, technically, of the headset. I don't want to just like stop uh, about talking about anything, all of them. Uh, but there is also like, if you want to take a photo, there is this amazing link, that uh, uh, this amazing presentation that I linked here, which I think is very exhaustive about all of the technology that is on the headset. There's a lot of material online, if you're very interested, I think that it's more like a one-to-one -one session, and you go and you dig through all of the material. Um, but you know, the main things are that there is a very big field of view, which is like almost 35 times almost 54 and 70. Uh, degrees. Um, the, the air display is actually very good too. Uh, there is also this feature now that is called segmented dimming and global dimming. I don't know if you're familiar with this feature. I don't know if you are. I just want to give an overview uh, about that for everyone. But the segmented dimming feature uh, tries to solve like a very famous problem in augmented reality, which is like rendering like dark colors. When you tend to, dark, to render dark colors, things can tend to fade out. So the global dimming kind of turns your view into almost like virtual reality with like a, if you're a Unity de developer, I could just call it like a solid color background that is just very opaque behind you. Uh, instead, like the segmented dimming does the same job, but then it's just like segmenting a specific part of your experience. So it's, like, it's almost like a drag and drop a material on an object, and that object is opaque, and you can see very vivid color just exactly for that object. And then you can play with it and do a lot of layering and, and you know, overposing based on what you're trying to achieve. So let's say you bought the Magic Leap and you want to start to build for it your solutions or your game or anything you want to do. Uh, the first thing you're going to do probably is going on the developer portal where you will see all of these options. Uh, there is also like a, a, a part where you can learn more about Magic Leap, but what you want to do probably right away is like downloading the tools. That's probably everyone's going to do very straightforward. Someone is going to go to 
on GitHub directly and just download the repo or clone it. And here there are the four main steps for me to install things and build a Magic Leap and start to work on the headset, which is installing the Magic Leap hub, which is a sort of like a, uh, you know, like a center, a sort of like a side loading hub where you can do a lot of things like entering the device, the loading video, the loading images, photos, you can do, uh, you know, like you can record things, you can stream things, you can update your OS and you can do all of those things with the, with the hub. So the main, the main point of entry. Then you want to download the SDK samples or other samples that you think are helpful for you. For example, the MRTK3, since it's based on XRI, you can also download that if you're familiar with that toolkit, which is probably one of the most uh, used on the market. You can update your OS and you can see different uh, you know, OS versions and if something is compatible, not compatible, you can just like regress your update and do, do something like that. And then you can just build your first APK. So if you guys are not familiar with also when you're building things for Unity, I, I believe you, you all are, because if you're part of a game development group, you all are, but like uh, APKs mean basically Android. Uh, Magic Leap is a very flexible device. Uh, you can build using uh, Unity, just building your APK like, if, like an Android app, basically. It's like an Android device, augmented Android device, basically, it's like Oculus. Uh, um, what it means like being based on OpenXR? Uh, OpenXR is like this kind of base layer, right, that everyone is starting to adopt uh, and um, being so flexible, like Jason highlighted before in his presentation, meaning that you can deploy your solution on this headset, but also other headset, and don't have like really a hard time importing things from one place to the other one. Uh, in fact, today just came out an article that talks about this uh, uh, on the Magic Leap portal and uh, like resuming, like summarizing everything for you, uh, OpenXR provides a common set of APIs for developing an XR application that works across a range of devices. Uh, if you ever download the SDK samples for Magic Leap, uh, if I were an AR developer, the first thing that I look into is like, oh my gosh, what are the features that actually I can do? Can I use Buforia on this? Can I just do image tracking? Can I just like map my room? And you can do pretty much everything. Like Magic Leap is a very flexible offer in terms that you can, you really have the basis to do everything, then up to you if you want to bring it to the next level through your work, through your solution, through your application. And uh, yeah, it's really, you know, like audio capture, camera capture, depth camera, eye tracking, hand tracking, every sort of input is there. Uh, if you want to just get the, the base layer and just improve it as much as you want, it's something that you also can do. Ooh. I have some videos here because I think it's more fun to see videos than just letting someone talk forever. So I don't know if you ever seen this concept by Audi, but Audi is like using uh, our headset to uh, start designing this kind of uh, Audi mock-up cars, which I think are incredible. I mean, look at this, there is not a steering wheel, it is like crazy. Uh, so, I mean, come on. But I know that now there are self-driving cars, but maybe since there are self-driving cars, and I, here in San Francisco there are so many, uh, maybe the interaction with the car is like totally changing. And we really don't need anymore to think interaction in a certain way, but we need to think interaction in more of like a companion, something different. Uh, I also really like to work in this space because there is really nothing that is being decided yet. Uh, and there is a lot of uh, room for experimentation and like renewing the language of interaction. And with the latest AI advancements, where you can basically just say something and someone ask it back to you like it was a person, uh, in any, in, there are all of, you know, very big spectrum of what I just said, but if you are on Twitter, you, you probably saw it. Uh, what, what it means having like a interaction in XR today, it's like a very, uh, you know, very interesting space, uh, exciting space to, to work in. Um, here there are some, uh, you know, ISV partners that are building solutions with Magic Leap. Most of the questions that I get when I'm in demos or if someone knows that I work in Magic Leap, they're like, what are people using Magic Leap for? Like, well, what is that for? Like, you know, like, what is the main use case for you that you work in the, in the field for augmented reality? 
And usually what I've seen around has been healthcare, has been defense, has been instruction, so overlay of like digital information for instruction and this instruction are not just in front of you but they are really like active instruction. So they can be like active diagrams, uh, active pieces and they are just like staying where, where you need to look at. And even if you ever saw Geopogo, Geopogo is like an architecture, augmented reality company and they do a lot of um, work for one-to-one -one scale inspection. So it's like they map fully this environment and you can see different versions of this environment. What I find very, uh, um, you know, like very cool about the augmented reality is that you're not really like locking your view like some kind of pass-through application, you're still in the real world, you can still have a conversation, and you can really have a total control of what you're looking at without any distortion of the environment. It's like one-to-one, -one and uh, it's pretty much like, you know, the, the right way to do things. <laughs> That's what I believe. <laughs> and this is another cool video uh, from a collaboration that Magic Leap is doing with NVIDIA and Lowe's. Uh, this is probably like kind of trying to uh, introduce augmented reality with some principle, I believe, of you know, uh, digital twin and object detections. So even there, if you ever use Unity before, you will see that Unity has so many solutions for digital twin. Uh, I think there is one that is called Reflect that I used when I was working in an architecture firm and they can just give you like a one-to-one -one, uh, replica of all of your building and then you drop it into Unity, you get all of those metadata in your inspector and you can do crazy stuff with that. And um, so Magic Leap allows to visualize all of that um, and it, I, I find it like a very, very cool solution. This video is too long, so. <laughs> I mean, what the heck, look at this. So this was like an architecture demo which I personally work on with my team, my amazing team that we did all of this together. So um, this demo uh, kind of is, you know, like a real-time demo. I'm showing you stuff from the point of view of the headset. So it's a real capture. It's not about like CGI and things. We are actually doing stuff here. And as you can see, the, uh, the field of view is like, pretty huge, you can still have like a full, uh, like, you know, complete view of the architectural model here. This, this is also a part of demos that we're showing today. Uh, this is like, a, I was very comfortable doing this demo because I worked before in that, in that environment and I kind of know what people want to see when they, when they have these presentations. And uh, there is like a certain steps that you go through for architectural projects. And I think augmented reality is like perfect technology for doing something like that. Here, of course, we just do it in a very limited way because we are in an exhibition, but just imagine this in real scale or just half of the scale and, uh, and just starting from that concept with all of those metadata that comes from things like Revit uh, and Rhino and all of the things that belong to the design world. We also have clouds. I mean, you see it. But if you want to test it later, we have it there, so uh, it's, it's super fun, and uh, let me know. Uh, another very exciting, exciting feature of Magic Leap that was presented in CES that I was very lucky to participate uh, as a demo presenter uh, is the remote rendering. This feature is <laughs> insane <laughs> because you get to render things like you would render on you know, if you have a 3090 Ti on a computer and you just like render stuff with Cinema 4D, that's how it looks like, like out of the box in AR. So it's, it was mind blowing when I saw it. I was like, what are we even doing? Building apps just like use the, ren the remote rendering. And I think this is something that Magic Leap is developing with a lot of smart people that are working on this. And uh, I, had, I, had, you know, I had the chance to, to, to see it and it was very, very impressive demo, reflections, and uh, it was incredible. Best AR experience ever. Uh, so without further ado, now we are in the demo time. There is space for questions. I will try also to give you my most honest and sober, exhaustive point of view for being a developer on the headset. I can also open my laptop, show you what my Unity project looks like and see how you like it. 
So please, thank you for being here today. Demo space is there. If there are questions, feel free to ask.